already. Uh, when I start out, I just want to say I don't want to insult your intelligence when I say this. But I believe that uh, the reason that most of us do not understand the Bible completely is because we don't understand the two most important things that the heaven consists of. If you uh, and if you knew that, uh, these two things you would see things a whole lot different. You would you would truly understand the Bible because the two most important things that the Holy Spirit has told me that heaven consists of is number one, love, because God is love. And number two, the Spirit, because you don't have a spirit. You are a spirit. And I believe if, you, if we looked at the Bible from that perspective, we can understand the Bible more because I think a lot of times we start reading the Bible and we don't understand it. But I believe if you look at that from that perspective, you will understand it a whole lot better. Uh, <clears throat> Give me a second here, I'm tore up. In every human heart, there is a longing to know more about the conflict between good and evil. The issues involved in the characters seen and unseen. And who led out in this struggle? How did this conflict begin between right and wrong? How am I related to it? I find myself in this world by no choice of my own. Does that mean evil or good for me? What are the principles involved? How long will this struggle continue? Will this world of ours sink, as some of our scientists tell us, sink into the depths of a sunless and eternal night? Or is there a bright future before us, radiant with the light of God, radiant with a life? In short, will God's great love for lost humanity and his plan for our redemption finally triumph? How may the struggle between good and evil in my own heart be settled in the triumph of right? What has God to teach us about this question, which is eternally important to every person? What does the Bible say? Surely God, who created us in a hungering for righteousness and a desire for truth will not withhold from us that knowledge which is essential to our happiness here and hereafter. And that's the spirit world that I talk about, hereafter. Every person stands in the need of God's forgiveness and new life. And every person can know it if he or she only repents and makes the journey to Christ Jesus. I forgot, I was so tore up. The title of this sermon is, It's So Simple. <laughs> and it is, it's so simple, the steps to Christ and the steps to knowing his love. It's so simple, I'm sorry. No matter who you are in the eyes of others, you need Christ. And no matter what you have done, let me say that again, and no matter what you have done, he loves you and he stands ready to welcome you. So don't get yourself just, just beat up over the past things, the past failures you've done in life. Full peace will come only when Christ returns. But until that day, we can know his peace in our hearts and be messengers of his peace in the world as we commit our lives to him. He asks us to open our hearts our whole lives to his incoming spirit so he may identify ourselves totally 
with him. Christ, Christ's need is for fellowship. And that is why he chose 12 so they could be with him to accompany him in his redemptive work in the world. He wants our company. He comes in to us that we may go out with him. Oh. The world is always telling us that we should be living the high life. Their idea of the high life is putting substances into our bodies, sitting in a tropical paradise, being surrounded by beautiful and wealthy people. Commercials and billboards talk to us daily. But what really is the high life? What really is the high life? Deep down inside, every human being knows what the high life is. The high life is being both happy and successful. Inside and out, it is something we all long for, but most of us believe it is not possible. And that is so sad. The question is, why would God put that desire in us and then give us no way to realize it? The answer is, he wouldn't. The Bible tells us that we can live the high life through Jesus Christ. Jesus is the way to the high life. So why isn't every Christian living it? The Bible tells us why. It says that we must first change the way we think. Proverbs 23, 7 reads that we are what we think. That would mean that if we are poor, miserable, lonely, scared, sick, and the dreaded word, I hate, I hate to hear, unworthy, or frustrated and in a rage at all the time, it is because of what we are thinking. I heard it once said that we will always move in the direction of our most dominant thoughts. And that is a profound truth. If we see ourselves working harder, but never getting ahead, then we will probably continue to work hard and never get anywhere. We can be born again and filled with God's Spirit, but if we are constantly thinking of ourselves in terms of, of poverty and unhappiness, that is what we are going to experience in life. There is a good reason the Holy Spirit used the Apostle Paul to literally beg Christians to attend their minds. Just stay with me. I know this is something that we have heard over and over and over and over and over again. Repent, repent. Change your, change your way you thought by renewing your mind. We need to hear it over and over and over again because that is the way we process. That is the way we learn by doing things over and over and over again. <laughs> Romans 12, 1, 2 reads, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice Miss Conrad, I'm sorry. I think I have a slide for that. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's okay. As a holy sacrifice, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service, and not be conformed to this world, but, re but be re transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is good and accept the perfect will of God. This says that when our minds are consumed with the Word of God, we will be transformed and moved in the right direction. We prove to the world around us what is the will of God, and His will is truly good, fully acceptable, and perfect. The Bible makes it clear that God's will is for us to succeed and live in joy unspeakable and full of glory. All this sounds simple enough, just renew our minds and change the way we think by reading and studying the Word of God. But then all of us blood-bought, spirit-filled believers are doing just fine. However, I notice that many of us are not doing just fine. When the issues of politics, race, doctrine comes up, when there is a family dispute, when your boss calls you in to tell you that you are being laid off, or when your doctor tells you that you have a terrible disease, that 
is when you discover just how renewed your mind is. Do you act like the world or do you act like Jesus? It is vitally important to keep renewing your mind. Understanding and going through this process will remove so many barriers and limitations. Listen to me on this. Listen to me after this. So many barriers and limitations. We, we, everybody say we. we. we one more time. We. we place on God's ability to move in our lives. Our, the way we see ourselves, our family, and our church. And yes, those times when we are negative toward God will keep us from receiving everything Jesus died to give us. As you meditate and read the Word of God, you take His Word to heart and you allow it to change your perception of God. Yourself, your life, and the world around you will be, and you will be miraculously transformed. And I can say this with full confidence, not only because it's happening to me, but more important because it is what God said and I can see it happening in many of you. The only thing that stands between you and living the high life is what's going on between your ears. Now I want to talk about the soul. Who has your soul? Who has it? We are not conformed to this world. And my definition of conform would be to fashion and configure ourselves like this world, to adopt to the customs of this world and to be squeezed into the world's mold. From the moment we are conceived, the world and the spiritual enemies of God are bombarding us with thoughts that may run opposite to the word of God. They are in the business of keeping us from Jesus Christ so they can control us. If the world and the devil do not succeed in keeping us from Jesus Christ and we get saved, the real battle begins. And how does that happen? By renewing our minds with the word of God. We have to change about the way we think about everything. The word renew could also be translated to renovate. When we renovate a house, mm, I just got to skip. I can't help it. I'm, just bear with me. Y'all stay with me. Stay with me. I want to go to, I, I want to get to the meat of this. Who are you? Who are you? It's a sad thing when people live their whole lives and never understand what it means to be a human being. It's a sad thing when people live their whole lives and never understand what it means to be a human being. They spend all of their years trying to find out who they are and why they are created. But they never go to their creator. If they did a little reading, if we did a little reading in the Bible, they would see, we would see that God created us in three parts. Spirit, soul, and body. I can't get off of this. I don't think I had a slide for this, but I'm going to read it to you anyway. First Thessalonians 5.23 reads, the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray, God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless until the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Listen close, listen close. Our spirit, soul, and body are intimately connected and work together. Our spirit we don't hear this enough. We don't hear it enough. Our spirit is the part of us that communicates with God. We were created to walk in communion with him at all times. And under this spiritual headship, 
is our soul, which is our mind, emotions, and will. Then our soul, in agreement with our spirit and God's spirit, tells our physical body what to feel, say, and do. And although our physical body is, our con is in contact, is our contact with the supernatural physical world, it is not supposed to be in charge. Our spirits are supposed to be in charge. Bear with me, people. Bear with me. Please bear with me. And just... Our spirit life is superior to the physical, natural, and material life. The spirit is the highest form of living because our spirit man communicates with the Holy Spirit who connects us back to God, our source. The senses constitute a lower, lower level of living. So we must, allow, we must not allow our five senses to dominate us. Therefore, we must renew our mind to the Word of God or it will be carnal of this world. We were originally created to live from our spirits in full submission to the Lord. I hope I am not boring you with this. I look at some of your faces and it terrifies me right now because I'm scared that I'm not getting this through. Jesus, please help me with this. Please let them perceive this because we don't hear this enough. We hear so much, so much other stuff but we don't realize We were originally created to live from our spirits in full submission to our Lord. God placed in human beings the desire to love and be loved by Him. Our souls, which contain our thought, emotion, and will, are supposed to operate according to our communication with God. We were never meant to operate on the basis of of our contact with the natural physical world. The fall of mankind occurred because Adam and Eve acted upon communication from the outside world, from the serpent. Instead of communication with God on the inside with the spirits, when we are act according to our senses and our natural thinking, we can be easily deceived and sin against God. And that Family is what happened to Adam and Eve. What went wrong? I'm, please bear with me, bear with me. In the Garden of Eden, Adam and Eve were living the high life, the true high life. They had every material thing they needed or wanted. They were healthy. They were happy. They loved and honored each other. Accomplished great things together. Their life was ideal. Their environment was perfect. And it was all based upon their intimate relationship with God. One day in Genesis 2, 17, God said, God told Adam, don't eat of the tree of knowledge and good and evil or you will die. Adam, exi Adam exercised the free will God gave him and he ate of that tree and disaster followed. He acted on the counsel of the serpent instead of God's word. And he made the wrong decision. He chose to disobey God and ate of the forbidden tree and everything God warned him about. About the tree came to pass. He immediately died. Listen to me, family. He immediately died died. Now obviously Adam and Eve didn't immediately die physically. They died spiritually. Death death is permanent separation from a state of being whether spiritual or natural. Initially they died spiritually which meant permanent separation from God. The spirit of God and the eternal life of God left their human spirits. 
because Adam and Eve no longer lived in the state of eternal life, their souls and bodies began to decay. And without God's spiritual life in them, eventually they would die physically. I'm sorry. Furthermore, they know they now live primarily by their physical senses and their natural and what their natural minds told them. They had sunk to a very low level of living. Humans, human beings lost a high life when they lost their intimate relationship with God. The result, listen to me close, get this now. The result of Adam's sin not only affected him, but the whole human race. And why? Get this. Because inside that one body was everybody. You, me, and everybody that's to come. As Adam's descendants, we were all born spiritually dead to God. I'm going to fight this thing the whole day. We were cut off from eternity. And from that moment we were born, we had to fight physical sickness and death. Satan became our spiritual Lord and our minds have been caught up in the material world instead of the spiritual kingdom of God. Thank God that was not the end of the story. God sent Jesus to pay the price for Adam's sin. Remember now that, that, remember that is us as well. Remember, everybody in that one body and gave us the opportunity to restore our spiritual life connection with him. When we accept Jesus as our personal Lord and Savior, surrendering our lives to him, we are born again spiritually. We get that connection back again. Our dead spirits are made alive by the Holy Spirit who comes to live in us. We can only communicate and fellowship freely with our Heavenly Father again. Okay, now let's talk about your divine connection. Stay with me, please stay with me. When you are born again, your spirit is brand new, and it comes in line with the supernatural. The Holy Spirit lives in your new spirit, but your soul and body are another matter. Although... They will be dramatically affected by the rebirth of your spirit. They are not brand new. They have not been regenerated yet. If, if, golly, I'm going to say this and, and you're going to laugh because if you come to Wednesday night services, you know what I'm saying when I say this. And I, I start, if I, I, I wish I had brought some, some baseball gloves to pitch out to the people in the front because when I say this, you're going to know what I'm talking about. Okay, I shouldn't have stopped. I had to, I, but I, you know, I'm, I'm circling around. Okay, if you had dentures be, before you were saved, after you are saved, unless God does a miracle, you're still going to have those. If you had a bad temper before you got saved, you will probably have to deal with that temper after you are saved. The difference is. Now that you are spiritually connected to God and your nature has changed, you are no longer under the influence of the devil. You are a child of God. Believers are instantly, instantly restored to all the blessings of knowing God intimately, but the full manifestation of our new state of being is a process of maturity. And if you if you're a child, you, I know you get so tired of hearing your parents holler, mature, 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 mature. I believe this is the number one reason why people are saved and within a short period of time they fall away. They are not fully aware, made aware of the maturing process that's ahead of them. As a believer, you still have battles with the devil, the world, and your flesh. Only now you have God's ability to overcome them and win the victory. Your divine connection is the difference between living the low life and living the high life. I'm 
Trust me, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Adam and Eve received knowledge directly from the source of knowledge, of all knowledge. The Holy Spirit lived inside of them. They walked and talked with Jesus and they communed with their Heavenly Father. Fallen human beings, separated from God, then received information from sources outside of them instead of the Spirit Word of God in them. They went from the high life, living, learning from communication, living, learning from communication with the God above in their spirits to the low life, living from their spiritual senses and thinking naturally for themselves. Isn't that when most things happen when we think for ourselves? The word of God became a mystery to them, a dead letter to their souls. After our spirits are made alive and reconnected to our Heavenly Father at the new birth, God becomes our instructor again. The Word of God becomes living and active in our lives. The Holy Ghost talks directly to our spirits. And we get information and wisdom from Him through our spirits. We now understand that process, that we process all that we learn by the Word of God, by the Spirit of God. In Proverbs 20, 27 it reads, the spirit of a man is the candle of the Lord, searching all the inner parts of the belly. What is the purpose of a candle? It gives light. Your spirit is the lighthouse of the Lord, where you receive revelation, knowledge, and understanding. His light shines in your spirit and gives purpose, meaning, and direction to your soul. His light brings health and well-being to your body. The Bible also reads in Psalm 119, verse 130, The entrance of thy words giveth light. It giveth understanding unto the simple. Light is defined in this verse as understanding. And what brings understanding is the word of God. It comes in and lights the candle inside your spirit. The Word illuminates your spirit and brings revelation knowledge to your mind. The Holy Spirit, which is your teacher, gives understanding about who you are, who you are, what you were created to do in life, and divine guidance concerning every choice you make. Okay, now let's talk about the power of choice. God wants you to make the right decisions so that you can, can, can fulfill the destiny He has for you. And in the process, a whole lot of other people will get touched and blessed by Him. But to make the right decisions, you have to have revelation and understanding about who you are, which, it's, which you will not get unless you renew your mind with the words of God. I know y'all are so tired of hearing me say that word, renew, renew, renew. But that's the key to God. He, he, he re-things us. He re-gives. Re right. Your soul is your mind, your emotions, and your will. It is where you make the decisions. Therefore, your destiny and the quality of life are determined by your soul. That is why the Bible stresses that you must be transformed by the renewing of your mind. You have to get your mind transformed by the Word of God, which means it comes under complete submission to the Holy Spirit in your spirit. Then you begin to speak, think, and act like Jesus instead of that old selfish, sinful person you were before you got saved. You will act from your communication with God instead of your physical senses and carnal thinking. Your soul is where the battle lies. Your soul is where the battle lies. Whoever and whatever controls your soul, whoever and whatever processes your thinking, your emotions, and your will, 
determines the course of before he was saved, he was responsible for the persecution and execution of Christians. And he believed he was faithfully serving God in doing this. Paul's life demonstrated how Satan influenced the decisions he made after he was saved. He went from living the low life to living the high life. Unbelievers may not be aware of Satan's influence or even that they have the power of choice. And even believers sometimes doubt they have the power of choice. But as believers, we should know from God's word that God will always give us the final decision. Life is choice driven and your soul is where the choice to live or die is made. Satan knows whoever controls the soul of a person will control the experience and the destiny of that person. He went into the garden with the express purpose of becoming the influence over mankind. Mankind is everyone. It's every one of us. Because God had given Adam and Eve dominion over the earth, the only way Satan could gain control of the earth was to gain control of Adam and Eve. When Adam turned from God's influence to Satan's influence, he sinned. And when Adam fell, the whole human race fell. Why? Everybody say this with me. Because everybody was in that one body. Say it. Because everybody was in that one body. It is a lie from the devil that your, your sin affects only you. Your sin always affects the lives of everyone around you. Just like Adam's sin affected all of us. If Satan can get just one person to do what he wants to do, he can cause a whole lot of hurt in this world. On the other hand, if God has all the influence in your life, he can do a whole lot of good to this world. And as believers, we need to keep our souls full of God and His Word. Then we will be making the right choices and have a godly impact on the world around us. Now, I told you I was getting there, and I am there. Okay? Whoever we trust our lives is trust our lives is, is the one who will possess our soul. And whoever has our soul is going to influence our decisions and our destiny. We want God to completely possess our soul so that His good and acceptable and perfect will can be proven in our lives. And when the people around us see the love, peace, joy, and success we have, they will want to know Jesus and begin living the high life too. From time to time, just ask yourself, who's got my soul right now? Let me hear you say that. Who's got my soul right now? One more time. Who's got my soul right now? One more time. Who's got my soul right now? Okay, that's it. Wait a minute, one more time. Who's got my soul right now? This will do two things. It will give the Holy Spirit the opportunity to expose an ungodly influence of thinking. And it will put you in remembrance of God's word and will for your life. Just asking yourself that simple question can make the difference between success and failure misery and happiness and even life and death. I love you guys. So I heard I heard how to live the high life. Did you? Did you hear that? 